Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Nasty Bones here and today's video we're going to build a legendary farm here at Country Crossing. We're also going to design it to be used for survival mode. Now we're going to see what it takes to get Country Crossing attacked as much as we can and hopefully by gunners. Now I've already zeroed out the build. Uh, I've sent all the settlers away except for the two original people here. We have zero food, zero water, zero power, zero defenses, and we're going to see if that's enough to get Country Crossing attacked more than usual. So we're going to head over to Finch Farms, and we're going to wait and see if we can get attacked. Now while I was here at Finch Farms, what I did was I slept in six hour increments for seven days. I got no attacks. I tried it at 12 hour increments seven days still no attacks tried it at 24 hours a day for seven days still no attacks so having no resources or anything at your settlement will not get it attacked any more than it usually will normally now let's try something different I've placed in some resources I've got three water purifiers producing 40 each equaling 120. I've got 100 power and then I've got 12 mute fruit that the two settlers can produce. And let's go ahead and take off to this time uh, sanctuary and we're going to just repeat what we've already done. Once again, I did the exact same thing, 6 hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, for 7 days, still no attacks. Now, I did get attacked when I came back, but I do feel it was just a random attack that you would normally get. So, this, once again, will not produce extra attacks at your settlement. Okay, now let's try placing our resources in the workshop. Uh, I went ahead and loaded it up with all types of food and water, totaling somewhere around 1,800. Now, raiders are lazy. Why come and work for the food and water when you can just come kill people and take what they've already got? So that's why I'm trying this little technique here. And it did work. It only took four days to generate an attack. Three days later, I was attacked. Five days later I was attacked and four days later I was attacked. So this definitely will increase the amount of times your settlement gets attacked. Now that we know how to get Country Crossing attacked more frequently, let's take a quick look at enemy spawn locations. This one I'm going to now is the most common spawn location for the enemies. We'll call this one number one. Now I am on the Xbox One and I won't be using mods because we're going to be using this build in survival. So I'm manually having to run to each location and show you by jumping up and down. Now there are four spawn locations here, but generally only three spawn enemies at any given time. So I'm only showing the three major ones where the most enemies spawn from. Alrighty then, now for my favorite part the build. Now I'm not going to show a lot about how I built this. This is more about how the farm works and how feasible it is for survival mode. Now I am going to build some gunner cages here for two reasons. One is it will help increase the amount of times I'm attacked here at this settlement. The second reason is it will help determine what enemy attacks me. Usually, whatever uh, uh, enemy you have caged, that particular enemy will attack frequently to help try to get them out of the cages that you have them trapped in. Now, the thing that I ran into a problem here with was this damn door. Now, I could snap things to it, but I could never get the door to snap in. So what I had to do was use the door as the focal point. So it's actually the very first piece that's going to go into this build, and I'll snap everything else to it, and it'll be the focal point. Now, what was cool about this little room, this little house, is that these concrete pieces actually fit inside of it perfectly. 
It turns out to be three walls long by one wall and two pillars wide. Now, I don't know that yet, so I'm kind of looking it over, making sure it's straight, and I go ahead and throw in a couple of pillars and then discover that, hey, this is going to work out great. That wall goes in all the way. One more pillar and a wall. It'll line up perfectly, and it does. So I go ahead and put this wall in, and you can see just how nice that fits right inside this house. And I'll just go ahead and take that pillar out, move this one over, so that way we kind of make it look even with a pillar, wall, pillar, instead of a wall, pillar, pillar. Okay, here we go with it being finished. And you can see how nice that looked on the inside. And we'll just take a quick look on the outside, see how it's coming together. Nice. I'm liking that. Looking good. Now that I've got the build a little more completed, I feel it's time that I need to put some power to the door. I really like the way this is turning out. It sure got a nice bunker feel to it. It's looking very good. Now for this segment, I just want to show you real quick a technique I use to wire up electrical doors with switches. I want to be able to open my door from both sides, but I don't want to go through all the hassle of turning this one off, turning that one on, etc., etc. So what you're going to need is a power source, and of course any kind. You're going to need two switches of your choice. The next thing you're going to want is two delayed off poles. So we'll go ahead and put those down real quick. The next thing we're going to want is an interval, pole, interval switch and then we'll go ahead and choose a door. Now any electrical door this will work with but we're just going to go ahead and pull out one that's similar to the one we're using in our build. The next thing we're going to want to do is pull out a computer. We want to program our poles. So go ahead and hook that up. Now you can program all your poles at the same time but you do have to connect them individually to the terminal. If you branch them together, then connect it to the terminal, only the pole that is connected to the terminal will program, and the others will not. So now what we're going to do is program the delayed off poles to 5 seconds. I'm going to program the interval switch to 5 seconds on, and who gives a shit off. Because once the delayed off poles go off, the interval interval switch will go off as well. So it doesn't matter how long that you program it to be off. Now we're going to go ahead and check it real quick to make sure that it's programmed at the five seconds. And as you can see, the interval switch has went five blinks. Now it's blinking red five times. That doesn't really matter. That's the off part. Now we'll go ahead and put the computer back in the workbench. Uh, go ahead, hook your switches up to power. Now, I do a lot of crazy, crazy wiring and lighting, and I've just grown used to turning my switches off when I do my wiring. Now, for this particular build, or part of the build, you wouldn't have to turn your switches off. You could just go ahead and leave them on. It wouldn't hurt a bit. Now, hook your switches to the delayed off poles, then hook your delayed off poles to the interval switch, the interval switch to the door. Now, we'll go ahead and turn on the switch, and the door opens. And five seconds later, the door will close. This way, I don't have to actually manually close it by flipping on and off the switch. Now, this one was off, so we've got to turn it on to set it, off to reset it, and then when we turn it back on, it opens the door, and five seconds later, it'll close. Then, if you notice, both switches are on. Now, we'll turn this one off. It resets the delayed off pole turn it back on door opens up working beautifully and we'll do this one real quick to show that it's working as well alright enough about the build let's move on now in this part here I do have most of the build completed and we're gonna take a look at a couple of things that make this viable for survival mode and I'll point them out as we come across them now at the end of my metal walls here I've built this cool little part extra part of the bunker and inside that area I have two gunner cages located 
the red lights that are around it are actually linked to the power that power the gunner cages. I did this so that if any time I ever lost power to the gunner cages, those lights would be off, and I could visually see that from outside without having to go in and manually look at it. Now, one thing about trapping or caging creatures or enemies in this game, it doesn't matter where you put those cages, they will trap whatever the cage is designed to trap. So you could completely, totally enclose them, and they'll still trap whatever creature that trap is. Now here I've got my power that are, is running to the traps. On this side over here I've got the power that runs to the defenses at this end of the map. Uh, I don't like my wiring hanging out, so I'm really enjoying these the, uh, electrical conduits that the uh, one of the DLCs gave us. And I'm sh sorry I don't remember which one gave us that. So there's my gunner traps. They're armed. They're ready to catch gunners. And uh, as soon as we sleep or leave the area, we will trap one or two. Hopefully we'll trap two. Usually per time it's one. So you might have to sleep twice to fill both cages or leave the area twice and come back to fill the cage. All right, now let's talk a little bit about survival mode. In survival mode, you can no longer fast travel. So if your settlement is under attack, you actually have to walk there. And as you're getting there, the settlement is under attack. And you have to come and turn your defenses on or have them on already. So what I'm trying to do here is I've got them hooked to this siren. And when you turn the siren on, the defenses actually come on. So it shows that I have no defenses until that siren comes on. Then my defenses are up and anything or anybody attacking this settlement will die a horrible death. A gruesome horrible death. And as you can see, I've got 134 defenses. Now, at 150, a settlement will 98% of the time protect itself without you showing up. But that's not what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is farm the uh, legendaries, so we're going to be showing up. And what we don't want to do is have to run all the way into the settlement, flip on the defenses, and let it take care of itself. What we're going to do is we're going to get the settlers to do it for us and the settlers will turn on that siren and later on in the video I discovered that they'll actually turn it off as well once the fights over so let's go see if our gunner cages have caught anything yet and yes one of them does have a enemy in it but only one so let's go ahead take off let's see if we can get it to respawn and load now when I got back I did generate an attack and lo and behold they're spawning in the fourth location that I didn't show in the beginning of the video and for the remainder of this video and experiments they did spawn from one three and four location they never did spawn from the second location so that had to change my build up a little bit to get defenses at that end to make sure that I could kill anything spawning from location 4. Now this segment we're going to go a little bit longer because I wanted to show a couple of things. One is I did bring a set of power armor to the settlers and left a fusion core in it. When you get attacked if you have a uh, power armor and there's a fusion core in it one of your settlers will get in it and uh, start the fight. Now I only have two settlers here and the dang sirens just are not getting turned on. And so I'm kind of hiding out, hiding back a little bit, trying to get them to turn the siren on. And it's just not happening. When all of a sudden I notice, hey, here's my power armor. And there's a damn enemy in it. What? Okay, yeah, this is not going to work at all. And uh, hey, I'm pretty sure it's mine. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run over to where the power armor was left to make sure it's gone. And apparently the uh, enemies will get into your power armor as well. And yes, it was right here beside the switch and so that means the enemies have gotten in it. Now since the settlers didn't turn on the power and the defenses come on, I went and manually turned them on too. 
Now I think what's going on here, and we're going to try that out, is I don't have enough settlers here. Plus I'm thinking that the siren might be in a spot that is not easily accessible to any of the settlers. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try and generate a couple of more attacks and see if this is the case. Uh, this just might be one of the rare times when they just actually didn't turn one on. Now it only took me three days to generate this attack. Uh, I'm up on top of the build so that way I don't really kind of interfere with what's going on down in the settlement. But as you can see the settlers just are not turning on the sirens so the defenses are coming on. And everybody's taking such a bad butt kick and even the provisioners going down. And I can't believe he's got a gauze rifle and he lets a guy with a pipe pistol get him down. Now your settlers or your provisioners will not die at being attacked by enemies. Only way they can die is if you kill them. So I'm going to take the siren I'm going to move it out here in this location. And we're going to see if that'll help increase the chances of the settlers turning on the siren. Now I generated another attack. This attack did take four days to generate. And this guy here I guess seems to have a big old set of hairy cojones but uh, he don't know more. So I'm just going to kind of hang back and I'm going to wait and see if a settler does turn on the defenses or not. And as you can see a couple of them are down and with everybody down nobody's really going to turn the siren on so the defenses are not going to come on. Now in this particular attack that we're getting ready to see here a settler did turn on the defenses but it was quite late into the fight and most of the enemies were already dead and you can see there was a enemy beside the siren uh, one of the settlers will run over and start attacking him there he goes he's running over he hit him then he does turn on the siren and the defenses do come on and then finish clearing out the enemies so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to another settlement and we're going to move a couple of more settlers into this uh, settlement. I now have six settlers here. Uh, the reason I chose six is because that's what uh, each individual person working at your crops can produce is enough food for six people. Uh, I didn't want to bring in eight and have a weird number or twelve or and have to build a lot of living quarters and as you can see I've got some living quarters up in stores and they're just in the way of spawn location number four and my defenses are just not getting over there to kill anybody that is spawning in this location which is real close to that red tractor right there and you can see my uh, bartender in the distance was down and so we're just kinda mulling around here and see if these dang guys will turn this thing on <clears throat> now this is kind of pretty close to the beginning of the attack and I'm thinking to myself that it's just not going to get turned on that's not what the problem is when all of a sudden on come the defenses and the last of the enemies go down so increasing your settlers does increase your percentage chance that a settler will turn your siren on now we're just going to take a quick look at the finished build here everything's been working great I'm loving it. It's all working out good when all of a sudden a lone uh, enemy comes along and wants to attack. And as you can see, the provisioner ran right over to the siren, turned on the defenses, and immediately they started working. Now, it is only one raider, so it only took a second to kill him. But this has worked out for the next six times that I tried and generated attacks. And then this is when I discovered that the settlers will actually turn the siren off when the battle is complete. And that is going to be super useful and helpful in itself. And this is actually working out perfectly. Now why we take a look at the finished product of my settlement here, let's discuss a few things that worked. First of all, you need to have resources in your workbench. Without resources in your workbench, you cannot generate extra tax to your settlement. 
The second thing that we learned is settlers will actually turn on the siren themselves. And if you link your defenses to the siren, then once they turn that on, they're fully protected and all you got to do is just sit back and see where all the legendary enemies are at, wait for them to die, go over and loot their bodies. And so I do believe that this is a very viable thing to have for survival mode if you feel like you want to farm legendary weapons. But one thing I would like to point out is I don't think one area is quite enough to generate enough attacks to really make it worth your time and effort. So you might consider doing this to two or three of your settlements that are fairly close together where you can run back and forth to both of them. And with that being said, I hope this gave you guys a, quite a bit of information and a few ideas and some thoughts on what you can do and what you can't do. And uh, I hope that you guys build some really neat stuff. And once again, if anything here was useful or helpful, I would appreciate a comment or a like. And if any of my other videos help you out, or this one, or some of my crap that I got, you know, maybe consider subscribing to my channel as well. Alright everybody, thank you very much. Everybody have a great day, and until next time, stay safe.